This is Capital Games Movie Club. I am the Wiz. And I'm Kim Shackman. Kim, how are you doing today? Good. Good. I'm I'm excited to talk about this movie. All right. <laughs> I was excited to see this movie and talk about it. Um, so why don't we get right down to it? We are watching the 2021 film Licorice Pizza, starring Elena Heim and Cooper Hoffman, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. This film was nominated for three Oscars the year it came out, including Best Picture, Best Director, and if this page would load, I can find out the other thing. I think it was writing. Why won't that make sense? Since he wrote, he wrote and directed it. Yeah. Well, it's not loading, so I'm going to assume it's writing. Stupid IMDb. Anyway, uh, be, now it loads. Ugh. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Screenplay. Yeah, everything Paul Thomas Anderson got nominated for this. Okay, uh, here's what me and Kim are going to do. Uh, instead of waiting for spoilers in the middle, we're going to uh, spoil the movie and then the entire review. If you want to wait and watch the movie and then come back when you're ready, that's fine. Uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, I'm going to post where the final thoughts are. So if you just want to see the ratings, that's fine too. And just come back to, for that that discussion so we're gonna get into spoilers and the review for licorice pizza in five four three two one i want to start before we get to the review of talking about my feelings on paul thomas anderson as a director and that before this movie except for heart eight i haven't seen heart eight which is his first film he's had nothing but fantastic films uh we're talking boogie nights which put him on the map punch drunk love which is a, a, a personal favorite of mine and then we have... The, I do enjoy that movie, too. Yes, Punk, very Punk good Strong movie. Love. The Master, There Will Be Blood. My favorite of his is Inherent Vice, which is a little divisive for some people. And then Phantom Threat, which was the last movie he did, which was really good, and which was the final film that Daniel Day-Lewis has done. He does really good films. So I was really excited about, about seeing this film, and also really excited because the word of mouth of this was loud when it came out what were your thoughts of uh, the film before stepping into watching it kim it's pretty funny i turned on the film and i had forgot a while back uh, my husband and i watched it together probably really? like when it first came out yeah it didn't even dawn on me and then i was like wait i know this movie <laughs> yes yeah, so, but i watched it a second time because i kind of like forgot some scenes and i really enjoyed it Good. i thought it was a great movie but you know yeah, no, we'll get into it. We'll definitely get yeah. into it. Uh, like I've said, like Paul Thomas Anderson is probably one of the better directors out there right now, along with David Fincher. Uh, it, Martin Scorsese is still alive right now, so he's still considered that as well. When a new film from Paul Thomas Anderson comes out, I want to see it. That's that's how good he is at this point. Where if there's a new film, I want to see it regardless of what it's about. And right. since I do like coming-of-age movies, I was really interested in seeing this. So... Why don't we get into the review of Licorice Pizza, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Why don't you start, Kim? Why don't you go ahead, since you talked about it in the, in the beginning, your thoughts on the film. So I really enjoyed it. I mm -hmm. liked the fact that it really kept my interest. Like, okay. I wanted to just keep seeing what happens next between uh, the two main characters there, mm -hmm. um, Hoffman and Ham. I felt that it was real for its time. It, it's based in the 1970s and I felt like it was a, a realistic view of that time for you know two somewhat kids kind of uh, falling in love and I don't know I just I really enjoyed the way it was shot I really enjoyed the storyline I thought some of the cameos in it were really funny <laughs> and well done but overall I thoroughly enjoyed the movie like it, it just kept my interest really well uh, my husband did too Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, he enjoyed it, too. I think the movie is very well shot, but that's, of course, a Paul Thomas Anderson thing. He is very good at creating a scene and mm. putting interesting spins on certain scenes as well. He did in the Boogie Nights. Magnolia was filled to the brim of that when that came out in 99. So this didn't surprise me, the look of the film and the way right. it shot. I, I like how, even though it's set in the 70s, it, it is kind of dark to a certain extent not it's but it's not bleak it still no it's not bleak at all like i didn't have that feeling no not at all like the direction the visuals and everything of that i think were very good in this i did like the performance of elena heim in this i thought she was 
very good in this as well. I'm kind of split on Cooper Hoffman. On one hand, I understand that his character is supposed to be obnoxious to a certain extent, and he's supposed to be a go-getter, and he's supposed to be that type of person that... I mean, he's also a kid, right? Right. He's a kid in the movie. Um, so, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to, I think, my main problem uh, okay. with that. When Continue. That comes. Okay. Uh, but the the thing with Cooper Hoffman's performance as Gary in this is that yeah he's all these things, but you have to also believe that he's charming enough for an adult woman or, or to want to hang out with a 15 year old kid, and that is where I had a lot of problems really diving into the film. Because on the one hand, I you could debate on whether Alana, uh, which is the character's name that Alana Heim's playing is just in a perpetual state of stunted growth and, and stunted adolescence to where she is 25 and has no direction and just doesn't know what to do, so she ends up hanging out with this kid. You, you could do that, but then... She's the, completely lost. She Okay, she She's is. completely lost. Right. She is completely lost. But then you have the added issue of the fact that she's hanging out with kids. I don't know about you, Kim. I, I think I do know this about you. But if you are, let's say you're 23, 24, 25, and you find yourself hanging out with somebody who's 13, 14, or 15, wouldn't you feel a little weird right away? <laughs> Unless yes. you're taking care of them? I mean, I must say, though, like, I think that, I mean, uh, when I was 25 and, you know, in my early 20s, like, okay. there were times when I had hung out with, I mean, I wouldn't go as, young as 13 14 15 mm -hmm. but like 17 18 19 year olds okay so i mean because i think i just really related to alana's character and okay. like the writing and i really did because there are a lot of women out there that are self-conscious that are lost that are feeling alone right and they're just looking for that person that's going to notice them and somebody that age is looking for somebody that they can sweep off their feet and knowing that she's 25 years old and he's holding her interest mm -hmm. is huge for him so i think that's why i liked it because i've kind of seen it happen okay i mean yes but then the the main problem i have with this film is that the film okay and this might be me on this Mm -hmm. The film doesn't criticize or hold Alana to account with the fact that there is a specific power dynamic in in this relationship where she is purely in control. There should be, like, uh, to me, a, a moral sense, and some people are going to roll their eyes hearing this, but there should be a sense that what she is doing is in some ways wrong. Well, Maybe there's only, it, like, one moment in the film where she mentions, like, this is illegal or something. Like, you're 15 and I'm 25 and this but is it's illegal. A, but that's but, it. Like, that's right. the only time it's mentioned. But it's a, such a throwaway line because it just feels like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's the 70s. I'm like, Well, uh... I was just going to say, it is <laughs> technically in the movie, it's the 70s. So... <laughs> Peace, love, and happiness, man. Like, let's smoke some pot and call okay. it a day. Well, like, that... you know, like, you okay. have to remember that. Sure. But uh, here's the thing, okay? And I'm, I'm not going to invoke my parents <laughs> all the time. So <laughs> after I watched this movie, I went out and I was making myself breakfast. And I talked to my parents. I'm like, I got to ask you guys a question. Just, yeah, what is it? I watched a movie, and the the first thing you hear from my parents is like, "Oh God!" <laughs> it's like oh, <laughs> I was no. gonna say, like, "What is this conversation going? Like, yeah. where's this going?" So I watched a movie, and it's set in the seventies. It's about a twenty-five year old woman who strikes a friendship with a fifteen-year-old boy. Certain things happen in the movie, and yada yada yada. They fall in love. Was that accepted to a certain extent in the 70s? And they both said emphatically, no, <laughs> it was not accepted. No, n no, uh-uh, mm -mm. no. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so I was like, so that was like the, that's like the, the big thing that stuck in my craw in this movie, where I, I have no problem with movies that take these taboo subjects and do a story about them. As long as you're realistic about it, and try not to, and I guess th this might be me moralizing, I'll, I'll admit, as long as you put it in the proper context. If there was a movie that basically was about sexual assault and it glorified it, 
I'd be fucking offended and I would be like, this is fucking disgusting. Mm-hmm. But but that's the problem I had with this film, essentially, is I had no problem with the fact that they explored that relationship. What The problem that I had is that at no point did the film seem to criticize or say about Alana in this film that this actually is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. This is Well, this like at the end idea. of the movie, it's like, you know, whatever, like they're the, in love, but because right. you already spoiled it. But it, and then like after the movie, like, so then what happens? Like, do they get arrested? Like, yeah, what? exactly. <laughs> the, the final, the final thing. Yeah. The final yeah. line in the movie is them holding hands and Allah yep. saying, I love you. I Gary. love you, Gary. And yeah. I'm like, uh, <laughs> oh, God. Like, I feel like you get swept into it, though. Like, I was so like moved by like okay. their feelings for each other that like I kind of forgot about that. Okay. And then but then I think you're absolutely right like at the end like I was just like okay so now what's going to happen like that's a huge age gap. Like. Exactly. <laughs> but see age gaps aren't an issue if they're legal. <laughs> like if you're telling me there's a like one right, of right. my one of my favorite romantic comedies is Harold and Maud about a 20-year-old kid who falls in love with an 80-year-old woman. And oh, I've never seen that, but that sounds disgusting. <laughs> it's a good movie. Okay, they don't get too graphic, <laughs> but it's a good movie. It's a funny movie, too. But because it's legal, it's okay. It might be right. a little weird to some, but it's legal, so it's fine. But, I it- mean, the sad thing is, is, like, out West, and even in the United States, this mm-hmm. shit happens all the time. Oh, oh, I know that. And it's not so even sad. Just, uh, like, but let's it's not, crazy. but let's, okay, but not just in the West. Also in the South, there are still people that yeah. do arranged marriages or or right. they religiously marry 14 or 15 year old girls right, to make their wives. Crazy. Yes, like uh, that does happen, sure. But then you have to provide the right context. In this movie, again, they sweep it under the rug, go, yeah, you know, they're like 10 years younger, and it's crazy right at the end. And I'm like, but at the Whoa. same time, like, you also have to remember a couple things. So okay. in the movie, I mean, I know technically she's supposed to be an adult, but she's a shit show. She's lost. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's out of her mind, right? Pretty much. Okay. And But no other adults besides her sisters really know that this relationship is happening. I, I'm glad that you mentioned the fact that she's 25 and she's a shit show. She's a shit show. She okay, is. sure, sure. I had to remind myself throughout the entire film that, because uh, I kept thinking, oh, this girl's like 16, 17, right? Because Alana Heim, even though I think she's, I think she's 30. Let, let me just double check here. Oh, in real life, she's yeah, 30? I think she's 30 years old. Let me find the birth. She looks like she'd be 30. See, but that, I did not think that. I thought she looked Well, 15, like in the 16. movie, I didn't think that. But like, if somebody told me that, I'd be like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Born in 91. So she is 30. She's a 31, which still surprises her. But at the time of the movie, she was 29, because this was 2021, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, like, that matters. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. I was like, whatever. <laughs> hey, what? hey, to a woman, it matters. Oh, Not 30 yet. <laughs> get off. Okay, fine, fine. Um, <laughs> to me, I, lo- I kept having to remind myself... Like, I kept thinking, oh, you know, 17, 18, you know, whatever, you know, okay. No. And I'm like, no, she's supposed to be 25. <laughs> but the thing and, that pulls you back to reality, understanding that she is 25, is like, she pulls away from Gary and goes and tries to get into these relationships with these older men that are like, well, not older, they're her age, right? Like, numerous times. Mm-hmm. But she always gravitates back to Gary because he makes her feel wanted okay but instead of celebrating the stunted growth and the uh arrested adolescence that she is in i think they should delve into that more but instead this movie just celebrated that to a certain extent and i'm like that really isn't something to celebrate that's something to be like maybe feel bad for her or maybe laugh at her or something but point out at certain points in this that this really isn't a good idea it's well, I think, a- too, like, in a way, you're right, because I think they tried to make Gary seem older than he is, but they didn't do a very good job with it. Like, because remember, like, he was a child actor, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And then and he had they money. Tried to, yeah, they tried to show that he had money and he'd walk into a restaurant and everyone knew his name and this and that. 
and you know buying new suits and trying to like razzle dazzle her with getting her into the show business and acting and all this stuff and I think that they were trying to make him seem older than he was so that it would be less creepy but they it didn't stick like it wasn't enough like you said and I don't know whether to blame Cooper Hoffman on that or to blame the writing on that because well I think it's both really because Cooper Hoffman looks too young to pull yeah, he, off he being looks 19, like a kid. 20, 21 but the writing also made it quite clear that he is not a mature, mature person. He is uh, a go-getter. He is somebody that is uh, what's the what's the term? A young I'm entrepreneur. Doing? Sure. Young, yes. Young he, he wants to do. He sure. wants to do that. He wants to do that. Absolutely. But at no point was I looking at this guy and thinking he had his, he had his life put together or that he is somebody that is mature or that is somebody that is stable in some sort of sense. But I think he's that not. it just seemed like that's what the movie was. Like that he's fifteen. Fun. She's 25. Yes. It's not legal, but they still love each other. They still love each other. That's the bottom line of the movie, and you cannot argue that. Sure, but w- the problem that you have in that, then, is if you don't address the elephant in the room, the elephant in the room takes over the room. It just, it oh, that's all that matters in that sense. You can't just wash over the fact that, hey, you know, if someone has a problem with your relationship, uh, Alana goes to jail. <laughs> so you can't just sweep that under the rug and go, oh, and happy ending. Like, wait, wait, what? And, and here's the other issue that I had, too, in this, is that the character, the other characters in this movie not only said nothing about it, they openly encouraged the relationship. Well, the sisters did, for sure. The sisters who are older than she is. Right. <laughs> like, and like I, I almost think they were like, oh, she's the baby of the family. She can do whatever she wants. Like, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was almost like, whatever. And it's like, really? Like, and, and also, too, like, knowing that she comes from this, like, strict Jewish background. Uh-huh. Like, you would think somebody would be like, hey, dad, like, why is she going out with this 15-year-old? No, and, and they're all like, oh, you should go back to Gary. I'm like, what are you doing? No. Yeah, like towards the end of the movie when, you know, he's she's looking for him or something, or he's looking for her. Yeah. And uh, they say, uh, the sister says, oh, she's still at the office or something. You know where she works. She's here or whatever. And then like, oh, like, does she want me to go there? And she's like, she misses you. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I... I mean, like, they, the sisters must have known his age, right? Like, they didn't really clarify that. Like, if they, if anyone else around them knew, like, how old he was, but I mean, I'd assume... That is true, that they don't clarify whether they know the age or not. But then if you look at Cooper Hoffman, it is quite clear he is a teenager. Yeah, like, but again, like, with, how would they know that he's, like, 15? Maybe they would think he's, like, 16, 17. Not that it makes it any better, but... Like that, it really doesn't make it any better. Yeah. <laughs> but um. But I don't know. I think. Uh, so I okay. I mean, we're gonna Maybe go. Maybe it's just me being like sappy, but like, I, like I realized it in the beginning that like this is illegal and they should probably mention this more. But then as like I got towards the middle of the movie and even a little bit towards the end, I was just like kind of enwrapped and encaptured into their performances because okay. I just. I really liked the back and forth in the film on how they, like, she would pull away, and then she would come back, and then he would pull away, and then he would come back, and they were, like, constantly chasing each other, and, like, literally in the movie, there was so much running, right? They were always running somewhere or running towards each other, but then at the very end of the movie, as you depicted, when she says, I love you, Gary, I was like... Like, I almost wish they just ended it with them running and she doesn't say anything. Or they're running and then, boom, it's over. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I mean. You, like, you, don't, you don't know what they're you running don't know, towards. Right, and you don't know, like, if she really, truly is in love with a 15-year-old boy, right? Because, like, throughout the whole movie, they a lot of times when people ask them, are you in a relationship? They'd be like, no, we're just friends or we're just business partners. Like, there's no clarity there. So that's why, like... I almost feel like it, it works in the movie because if you think about it, they kind of hide it. 
right? Like from others, like it's almost like their little secret. Yeah. They're always together, but they're always either friends or business partners to to everybody else. See, this reminded me a lot of Inherent Vice. Uh, Inherent Vice was kind of divisive for some people. Some people really liked it. Some didn't. And I think the main thing was the vibe and the feel of the movie was very distinct and unique. And I, I think you reacted very well to the vibe and the feel of the movie more than anything yeah, else. Yeah, for sure. You, you enjoyed the, the you let the whole thing wash over you, essentially. I did. Okay. I did. Which, I which really did. is fun, because that's what happened with me in Inherent Vice. Inherent Vice, the weird thing about that movie is the main plot of Inherent Vice ends before the first half of the movie is over. And then the rest just goes in another direction. And oh, I, I really dug that about that movie. I thought it was really good. And I liked the, the feel and the vibe and the mood of the film. But that is very specific to certain people. So, right. it, so with that, you have to rely on that specific person to actually get drawn in by that, which I think you were in that. And that's fine. I, I think understand. that's what happened to me because yeah. I also felt like it's not definitely obviously not just because of the gay uh the gay just not just because of the age difference man and woman want to fall in love so gay <laughs> so gay kim I can't talk today oh my are god you, kim are you gay for loving your husband <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> not just because of the age difference but i just felt like it was a different type of love story and i i love different types of films that are romantic love stories that are not your typical like yeah you know i just enjoy that because it's just different yeah i no, i i and it, I, and it holds my interest that's sure. the other thing no so. i i definitely agree i feel the same way too and i need to hear if you're gay for your husband totally gay for my husband absolutely good to hear love him yes absolutely but uh, i must tell you this Okay. Um, so something I did notice when I watched this probably about when it first came out about two years ago almost now mm-hmm. when I watched this the first time mentally I was actually in a really depressed place that day okay and it didn't hold my interest as much I kind of like turned it on and I think I actually fell asleep in the middle of it because I just was it wasn't as engaging but now that mentally I'm feeling a lot better now and stable mm-hmm. and watching it like I, I thoroughly enjoyed it so again it just depends on how you're feeling that day and how it if it clicks with you or not it, and like it, you said the vibe it's a mood piece it's a it's a movie exactly. that exactly I, I think people who are drawn to it need to be in a specific mentality or maybe maybe that's my problem with this too maybe you need to be in a specific mentality to let it wash over you and to enjoy it. That is certainly a possibility, because this movie, when it comes to plot, kind of goes nowhere. Like, really, it it goes in many different directions in this, to the point where it kind of has no direction at all. Which is fine, as long as the mood and the feel of the movie washes over you. And it just did not do it for me. And I think the big thing I had the problem with is just what was going on in the movie itself. I... I felt, and I have reasons that I feel this way other than, you know, it's like illegal. Like personal reasons. Yes. Yeah. Other than the fact that it's illegal. But when I look at relationships like this, a clear thing of an adult falling in love or a kid falling in love with an adult and an adult not saying, that's nice, honey, but you know, you still have a lot of living to do and you can find somebody, you're, and yada, 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 you know? Like, but it's because she's not an. She's really mentally. She's really not an adult. That's true. No, that I I will agree with you there. That you is know? true. But I, to me, I just can't get past the age difference in this. And you know, people will say, "Oh, but it's I also but think a number. it's." But I also think it's interesting that she's the older one. I feel like, I feel like it's a lot, and I don't know why, but I feel like it's a lot more creepy when the the male exactly exactly the and, predator and that's much. probably why it is that way because if it was right. the opposite it would be a far more disturbing movie. oh i would hate this movie and i then, would be like oh yeah. my god no but again absolutely. i truly think that you know it did wash over me but i also i i feel like i kind of was her at that age so i can relate wait wait um, wait, wait clarify please clarify just a shit show okay just... like a total shit show like 
not knowing what I wanted to do with my life, tried a bunch of different careers, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to be an entrepreneur, but couldn't make it, pining over not men that were younger than me, but men that were mentally younger than me, you know? Okay, so it's, yeah. so it's kind of like, I don't know, like, I get it. Like, the only thing that was missing from this movie for her, I feel like, was like substance abuse with yeah. the way she was. Like, she wasn't a drinker or on drugs or anything like that. It's almost like being wanted and, and needed by a man was like her drug. Yeah. I mean, if they were, if they went that route, I mean, then that would entirely excuse right. the mentality of what she was in, which I think would distract from the film itself. Uh, I think that would probably not be a great idea in that end. But, uh, right. I don't know though. I think in a little bit, I can ar we can argue, and you can kind of understand that. Again, it's like how would anyone really know that they were like totally pining over each other in the well, movie? You you knew because from of, the be you knew from the beginning that that Gary was in love with her. You knew from the beginning. No, he, I know, but like other characters in the film, like how would they know? They like asked. Just because they just asked because they were in a relationship. They they yeah, and they were like, "No, we're friends." You know how that is like. You you've had friends. Who I say know, but they're like, not into each other. But you know damn well you, they are. But then you see them like working together, like physically working. You know, with the waterbed business, and she's lifting boxes, and she's opening the. You know, like physically working with each other. So it's like maybe they really are just friends in their business, part. like. There's some argument there. It's a it is definitely a back and forth. It is definitely something that leads up to that to a certain extent. But as that's g starting to happen, I'm waiting for the you know this is a bad idea, right? And, um, <laughs> and I didn't see that. Like, and you're right on one aspect of Alana is that she is emotionally and mentally very immature. She's yeah. with a well-known actor at the age of 25, and she's sticking her tongue at her ex-friend who is 15 with another 15-year-old girl. And right. I'm thinking, like, huh? Okay. <laughs> like, but, but she likes the attention that he gives her, and that's why she does that, because she's stooping to his level as well from okay. a, an age gap perspective. But I think that um, at the beginning and a little bit throughout the movie, I also felt like she was like money hungry, right? Like, so was because, well, so was Gary, right? But I mean, like money hungry in a sense of I'm going to be with a man and he's going to support me, not like I'm going to work really hard to earn a living. And I guess that kind of goes along with maybe the '70s. I don't know. I never I yeah, didn't grow up in that time, but that could be. Because think about it, like every man she tried to get with outside of Gary was like, had money. Sure. Right? Sure. So, I mean, I don't know. That's kind of an, an angle that I thought of. That is certainly a possibility, but I don't think they, um, I don't think they would dive into it all that much, I, I, I think. I, right. Is, it's just something I kind of noticed because she wasn't going for like some schlup on the street, right? Outside of Gary, she was going for the politician. Gary wasn't the schlub either. <laughs> right. No, I know, but that's what I mean. Like, instead of Gary, she wasn't going for like some like homeless dude on the street or like some bum. You know what I mean? Like, she was attracted to men that had money and were doing right. well for themselves or had a big purpose in life. You know? Yeah. No. Absolutely. I, I can I can see where you're getting at with that, but I I just yeah I I, I get what you're saying. I think you're personally having a hard time wrapping your head around the age. Oh no! Wrapping yeah. my head around is not the problem. Knowing it's wrong is the, the problem. <laughs> that's the, that's the thing. And I, I think the film. I mean, okay. I, I want to clarify this specifically. If you want to make a movie about this and then to have the end being that they're in a romantic relationship, that's fine. But you can't just ignore the fact that it is a illegal and be kind of wrong. I mean, if you show or notice the fucked up parts about the age difference and the dynamic of that, then I would have no problem watching the movie and seeing it for what it is. But the fact that, it, and, may, and maybe you disagree, the fact that I feel like it glorifies that is, I think, a big problem with me on that like if if you were to come out and have this movie maybe some characters will point or specific characters will point out to alana 
You know you're hanging out with a 15 year old, right? You know that he's just a kid, right? Well, I'm you also surprised that- like that they didn't pull in Gary's mother more because she was like his pub. Wasn't she like his public relations person? Like, I don't think she, she was. No, I, I, I but, thought that he said that in the beginning. May, maybe, maybe, but I, I think not having the mother there would score the fact that he essentially is on his own. If his yeah, mother was there, and then the mother condoned the relationship, that would add another fucked up kind of yeah. family <laughs> dynamic. Well, that... no, like, as in like having her be like, "What are you doing? Like, you're 15 right. and she's 25 or whatever." But that would also mess with the vibe of the movie, I think. True. Like, if you would have... This movie has a very... Not, I guess, not happy vibe. Well, kind of. But it's a a more positive... It's almost like two people that are pretty fucked up. Yeah. In a sense, that are being fucked up together and it makes them happy because yeah. they're not alone in the sense that they are fucked up. <laughs> like It's a live, let, live vibe in this. Exactly. And exactly. I don't mind people who are live, let, live or believe in that as long as they're not harming anybody. <laughs> but right. in this case, when li- like if it was let, live, live and the guy likes to murder people, I'm like, mm, you know... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, you know? I don't know. Killing people is bad. Yeah. Like, so, like, if you're saying, hey, let, let live, and it's statutory rape, I'm like, um... Well, I do like... <laughs> the fa- I, you have to say, though, I do like the fact in this movie that they don't really get sexual. Like, there's only, like, one part where she shows him her boobs, and then, like, another part where he almost attempts to touch her boob, but it doesn't happen. Well, he does I like he- the fact that they don't do that. Well, he does get head from somebody. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. You when? Don't... Remember the scene when they're in the wa- the waterbed store and she peeks into the window to find it and all you hear is... Oh, is that what they were doing? Yes. Yeah, but it's not from her. No, it's, it's not. Uh, yes, it's not from her. It's from they're... like a younger girl, isn't it? Right, Like yes. someone his age? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so okay. Which That's causes fine. her to then make out with a random guy and then... And then she's high and walks home in the outfit. But, like, they don't show it happening. They, you can only hear Well, no, it. you can't because he's too young. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> of course not. But they do get sexual, but they just don't show it in this. And, yes, there no, is... No, but I'm talking about the two ca- the main characters. Yes, they, yes. They, they don't at all in the whole movie. Well, there's sexual tension. Some... Wouldn't but they showing don't... somebody's genitals or boobs be sexual in nature? Like, if I were to send you a photo of my penis, yeah. wouldn't that be sexual? Oh, that's true. Yeah, you know? But when you put it in that well, context... You, you know what? Let's test the theory. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Close no, all devices. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, husband? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I'm not doing this shit anymore. <laughs> no, like, I... Let me rephrase that. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. So I guess it's more like... They don't touch. They're not touching each other. Okay, like yes. there's no like physical. Like so, it's like they don't give into their. Said, they don't give into their sexual desires. Their desires, exactly. Okay. But if somebody said to them, and I again, I know it's illegal. I'm not condoning this, but I'm just looking yes. at this from you know a real uh, a perspective of let's say I was, it was the 70s and I was in this movie and I was a separate character or whatever. Like they don't touch each other. They only hold hands. I mean, yes, they're they're kind of pining over each other, but like, is it still illegal if they did haven't done anything? Um, is it though? Like, is it? Yeah. Because how question. can they prove that? Like, that's they're a good just. Question. What if they just said, "Yeah, we're just friends. We're just I friends. Mean, we're just business partners." Like, so I that's mean, what I think. That's my argument. Is like how? Like, yes, I do understand that. Like, it is wrong, and maybe they should have depicted that a little bit more in the movie. But like, did they really have to? Yeah, I don't. I don't know the the intricacies of statutory rape. Yeah, I'm gonna Google it. Be, please don't. <laughs> I don't want to know. All I know is I'm not gonna. I am. I, I just don't want to be involved in that. I don't want to even be ill. Like, no. But okay, I I've... won't see. I'll just look it up and I'll keep it to myself. Okay, fine. In the movie, let's just say sure. in the movie, it sure. doesn't show them having any contact sexually, like with each, like touching each other or anything like that. Sure, sure. Okay, yes, yes. That that is that is true. That's true. 
the, I think the the one of the other problems that I have with this movie is that this is definitely an adolescent male sexual fantasy movie, yes. but the main character is the woman. Yeah. And I felt that was kind of weird to a certain extent. Because I kind of liked it though. Okay, I mean, well, it is interesting, but to me, if the main character is the woman, I would think that you would want to base the movie around that woman. Like have but, her have like a sex, like a fantasy of a younger man or sure. boy. Sure. Basically, is that where you're going with this? Maybe, sure. Or her having the complicated feelings regarding that. That's the other thing. At no point did I see anything except for maybe one scene where the character goes, maybe this is not a good idea. <laughs> or maybe I should start like maybe i should really think about what i'm doing here but i think she was so lost that she just didn't care sure like she was like eh, makes me feel happy but so. again but again like the movie i think is more of a mood and a vibe piece and then right. I, I think right. if i fell into that i think i would be okay with the movie to a certain extent yeah. but i just i just was not I, the, the mood and the vibe didn't hit with me and then when that didn't hit then everything else started tumbling down I think it's what happened in this one, but well, yeah, this you is, got a negative vibe from it right from the beginning. Not from, not right from the beginning. Just I, no, no, yeah, right from the beginning. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it just like once you you figured out what that what this was about and the relationship and the age gap and like how it really wasn't how it was being yeah. portrayed, you were just like, no, uh, this is not a positive experience. Um, but you know. But again, I, I want to point out if the movie, when this movie is being advertised, being shown off, and it was getting all this o- award consideration and everything, mm-hmm. my thought was, oh, it's about two teens. That's what I thought, because Elena Ham did not look like an adult. She looked like a teenager to me. And yeah, I didn't Hoffman, see like the, I didn't see it, like uh, any of the advertisement for it, so I mm-hmm. wouldn't know. And Cooper uh, Hoffman definitely looked like a teenager. Like I was, oh yeah. So, uh, so I was like, oh, it's a teen coming of age movie directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Okay, I'm I'm there. Awesome. Right. right. And then once you realize the woman is 25, and they meet at his high school, I'm they like, they threw you for a loop. Yeah, I was like, wait, 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 wait. I must have heard that wrong. And I rewound, and I was like, oh, you're 25. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, what the You're hell? Like, what am I watching? <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I was like, what the hell is going on here? And for me, I just kind of went with it. I was like, okay. okay no, all right. that's fine. That, that's this is, fine. This is what they wanted to portray, so let's keep going with this. And then I, like you said, I kind of just fell into the mood of it. And I was like, oh. But then, but I, I really don't like the end. I don't like the, yeah. the way they ended it at all. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it would probably have been better off if they were just either... Just shut her mouth and keep running. <laughs> yeah, either keep running or... Yeah, like, the the time where they meet after running and then they kiss is just like, I think before that happens, end it. I, you know, yeah, actually, yeah. specifically, they should end it when they are running and then don't even show them no seeing kiss. each other. No yeah. kiss. No kiss, yeah. no seeing each other, nothing. End it. Right. And then make the audience think, huh, I wonder what happened. And then yes, you, that and then, would have been a good, that would have been great. And then you would have people going, oh, I wonder if they got together. And then someone would be with me like, no, that would be illegal. I wonder if they got arrested. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be you. Oh, are they in jail right now? So then, well, well, he won't be. He'll be high fiving his friends, going, "Hey, yeah. bro, guess what I did with a twenty five year old bro?" And then she'd be doing ten years in Rikers. So, <laughs> so yeah. Well, it's California, so Rikers is in New York. But yeah, she would be in jail. <laughs> but, yeah. but he would be high fiving everybody. He's like, "Yeah, high five, bro." But well, that's actually not exactly true. But uh, I think if they kept that ambiguous, I think I would have. A much more positive, eh, not very positive, but I would have a, a little more of a positive feeling at better the end of the movie. Better outlook, yeah. Right, but uh, in the end, I just was like, oh, what? <laughs> but can we talk, let's talk Go about ahead. the uh, cameos. Go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, cameos, uh, we had Sean Penn, Tom Waits, we had uh, Bradley, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. We, he was unhinged. <laughs> I was, I loved it. And that's when my husband was like cracking up. He's like, this is great. Like, oh. 
that kid That's fucking funny. deserves it. I hope he smashes yeah. his head in. <laughs> like, he's just like, he's just like, are you fucking with me? Are you fu-? like, he's just so like the way he's, he's so good. I love him. Yes. I love Bradley Cooper. Like, oh, yeah. what's not to love about Bradley Cooper? Oh, yeah. Bradley Cooper. You know, he, he, he wears a good beard. He does. He does. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah, I agree. I, I, I thought his thing was funny. I, I don't get why Sean Penn was the world famous actor in this. I mean, was he an actor or supposed to be like a director? No, he was. I an didn't actor. really get that. He was an actor. Okay. He, oh. he was acting in the scene with uh, Alana, with Alana in that scene where uh, with the motorcycle. Yeah. Or yeah. Or, or, in, or in the desk scene where they were doing that scene in there. Uh, John C. Riley was in this for like a few seconds. If you would catch him, I thought that was kind of funny. But, um, yeah, the cameos are neat, I, I guess, but they're... I liked it. I thought it was inventive. Like, I was like, oh, this is funny. Like, sure, sure. Most of them were, like, a little bit of humor. Yeah, you know? right. And then who's the guy that... Oh, I forget his name. The guy that played the, the gay guy to the politician. Oh, God, oh, not Benny Safdie. The, um, the, the, the one that played his lover is what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. When she meets him at the dinner table, and then he she walks him home, pretending to be his girlfriend. I think it's Dan Sheridan. I'm not. I like him. Sure. I thought yeah, he was like, good. Yeah. I mean, he only had a teeny tiny part, but he was like at the end when she walks him to the door and he's crying, and she's like, he's like, "Do you have a boyfriend?" And she's like, "Yes, no, I don't know." And then he's like, he's like, "Men are all shit, aren't they?" And she's like, "Yes." Yeah. <laughs> and then they hug, and I was just like, "Oh." You know, it's a nice little moment. And that would be the nice, that would be the great scene for it to, for her to run and then end the movie. Like she's running away from the situation that is clearly not good for her. That I think would be the best ending of this movie. And I, and, and I would go from really not liking this to passively recommending to a a certain extent. But I, I just. Yeah, I think it honestly. From what I'm hearing from you, I okay. truly think it's because of personal experiences, maybe. Yeah, I, 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 I just don't like kids or having past. relationships with adults. I yeah, know, but yeah. then like, but then I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, what if? Okay. You know, all okay. Let's let's do another scenario. Uh-oh. And again, maybe we're reading too much into this, or maybe I am. But Go ahead. Go ahead. so let's say at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. they they do love each other. Okay. You know, no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. And they kiss. Mm-hmm. But let's say, so he's 15, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got three years till he's 18. Right. Let's say they either wait it out and they don't do anything else, you know, with each other on a sexual level. And they're just still business partners because they've been doing that for quite some time. Okay, so she's grooming him. Go ahead. <sighs> no. Is it not grooming? Come on. Well, he's just into it, too. And then they He's turn 15. <laughs> and then they turn 18. Well, yeah. And then they then he turns 18 and then they end up being together. Or they figure out within those 3 years or sooner that this is illegal and we shouldn't be doing this. No, I you know think the, I, mean? like, I think the real thing that would happen in that is that if they were to wait until they're 18, he would get antsy, he'd get horny, and he would want to get sex now, so he'll right. cheat on her. And then that, I think that is Well, then is that could happen. happen, too. Right? And then she'll spiral even more, hit rock bottom, and then maybe find Jesus. Sure. I don't know. Sure. Whatever. Sure. That's fine. <laughs> but then, again, that would conflict with the mood of the movie. Uh, this movie, I think, is supposed to be more of a mood piece and a vibe piece than anything else. And I think that's what people really get out of it is that yeah. it, that they don't really pay attention or really even care about what's going on on screen. It's just the vibe and the mood of the movie is what really attaches like them to it. Like you said, the like live and let live. And yes. Like, not and, everybody has that in their life. Right. And I felt the, the vibe and mood thing really is specific to the person who's watching the movie. I love Inherent Vice. I think Inherent Vice is an excellent movie. I think it's I'll need a, a, to watch that. I think it's Paul Thomas Anderson's. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, say that again. I said I really need to watch that because you keep commenting about how good it is. Right, and it's got Joaquin Phoenix. So, um, oh, I love him. Yes, and not a lot of people like that movie. A lot of people felt a little weird about that, but because I 
dug what the, the mood and the vibe of that movie, I had a much more positive experience in that. And I think that's where I am having that disconnect, really, with a lot of people who like this movie, is that they dig the vibe. They dig the feel and the mood of this movie. And they like that. And kind of wash away that ickiness that's in the in the movie whereas since i did not buy into the mood of the movie yeah i'm looking at this going oh my god what the fuck am i watching there are movies i i don't i'm pretty sure there are movies that i really like that if i really thought about them and go yeah, that's wrong <laughs> it's like that's not that's not really a good thing to do and but because the mood or the feel or what they do differently in the movie uh, just registers with me that I end up liking the movie. I'm pretty right, sure there right. are movies that I have that, that I like that are like that. I just didn't dig the vibe and the move, the feel of the movie. It just didn't wash me away. So then what's left is, okay, so what am I watching? What is the substance of the movie? Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> this right. is what it is? Yeah, since you didn't drive with, drive with the vibe, I mm-hmm. guess you could say it's like, this is the plot. Yeah. And it, it becomes more, like, factual at that point. Right. And uh, I, I just want to clarify. I did like Alana Haim in this movie. I want to see her in more movies. I'm yeah, I think re- she did an excellent job. I am really not sure about Cooper Hoffman, though. I I, I, mm. I think he did okay. I didn't think it was, like, the worst. But they, when they advertised this movie, they made it clear that this is yeah, the son was, yeah. of the world-famous and world-renowned actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. And the advertisements and the people who were critics and everything were saying, "Oh, like it's like, it, it's like Philip Seymour Hoffman coming back to life." And I, I'm watching this going, "No, <laughs> Mm-mm. nah, uh, uh-uh. uh." Yeah, I think he could have done a little bit better ch- job of being uh, trying to be more charming. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, uh, like I, I definitely he... think she carries him though. Yes, the no, movie. definitely. You know I, mean? like... I, I definitely agree with that. I think there could have been a better actor they could have gotten for Gary in this. I think there are just better actors out there, and I don't think Cooper Hoffman was right for it. I, that's my opinion, at least. I think there could have been a better younger actor out there that could have done this, and done it a lot better. My opinion on that, anyway. Uh, I just want to mention really quick is I really love the part when <laughs> what's his face is at the dinner table with the parents, and he says he's an atheist. <laughs> I felt so bad for that guy. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because they're all just like, what the fuck? And then she walks outside. <laughs> she's like, what did she say to him? She's Are like, you circumcised? Yeah, no, but she says something Show me your like, penis. What does your penis look like? That's what yeah. she says. What does your penis look like? And he's like, I don't know, an average penis. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was so just so stupid but so funny. And then she's like, are you circumcised? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, then you're a Jew. At least, you know, I I appreciate a guy who's honest about his penis size. (laughs) And his religion. Eh, Not so much, but, you know, like, (laughs) if a guy's Christian and says, you know, I have a small dick. I'm like, oh, okay. I respect that. It was just funny. I was like, oh, my God. Because so many guys were like, yo, bro, 11 inches of pure wood, baby. And I'm like, yeah, sure you are, pal. <laughs> like, you're so full of shit. Yeah, a- absolutely. But then you, you get a guy who's like, yeah, you know, Maverick's not that impressive, you know, yeah, you know. But it either or either he's doing it to save face or, and just be like, you yeah, know, whatever. It's not the most important thing. Or that when a girl finally sees it and it just smacks her in the face when it comes out, it's like, oh my god, I thought you were small. It's like I lied. <laughs> so, oh my god. <laughs> Sometimes the element of surprise is the best thing that you can give to somebody in a relationship. <laughs> Advice from somebody who's eternally single. Anyway. I was going to say, how the <laughs> fuck do you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Anyway. Oh, you want to get to final thoughts before I divulge yeah. more? <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Okay, oh. right. okay, go ahead. Your final thoughts and your rating. I give it a solid for war okay as i mentioned i really did get swept up into this movie into the vibe into the liver let live and i don't know i just i guess i'm just dirty because don't i just felt that. okay i just felt okay with <laughs> the 15 25 year old relationship but i think again from my personal opinion and perspective uh-huh. um i've i've been there 
in her uh-huh. position of feeling lost, okay. not in a relationship with a 15 year old, but yes, a feeling lost. That. And I could see how it could go that way mm-hmm. um, very quickly when you're in that state of mind. So I, I, I also, as we mentioned before, I love the way the film was shot. Yes. And as you said, Paul Thomas Anderson is known for that, which is awesome. Uh, now I just want to watch like way more of his movies based mm. on that. And I don't know, I think they could have done the ending better. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie and I would watch it again. Coming out of the film, I was leaning towards one or one and a half stars. And I and it was mainly like we've talked about. It's mainly to do with the substance of the film and that I didn't like Gary that much. I didn't like Cooper Hoffman that much in the movie. And I just didn't really strike a nerve with the vibe of the film. That being said, I'm going to give it two stars because I think the film is shot really well. It is very beautiful to look at, and I love I love the music. Something we did not talk about. The music is really good. Oh, yes. yes. I forgot to mention that. Excellent music. Yes, Excellent. absolutely. So, uh, the, like the, Which the, helps make that vibe and that experience. Uh, yes, absolutely. The aesthetics of the film are outstanding. I, I really like the way it looks and the way that uh, it sounds in this. But the feel and the mood of the movie just didn't land. And again, like I, I, I will say again, the the mood and the feel is something that is very specific to certain people. Some will really dig it. Some won't. Mm-hmm. So I, I won't turn around and say I don't think anybody should watch it. I think if you're not bothered by the substance, go ahead and watch it. Bear in mind when you do watch it, it is relying on you to just wash yourself into it. And if yes. you can do it, you might really enjoy it. I couldn't do it, and I didn't v- get into the vibe of the movie, so I just ended up... But I, I do recognize there is some strong points, including the direction and the sound and Elena Heim's performance. I think she was actually yeah. pretty good, and I want to see more of her in that. So two stars for me for Licorice Pizza, four stars for Kim. On- okay, Kim. God, we finally got to disagree about something. How about that? And we don't, and we don't like hate each other afterwards. It's great. Well, you've recognized that I'm so superior in intelligence that it's not oh, worth. Oh God! Hating. So shut it's up. Go- it's good for you to recognize that oh, at a very please. young age. Hey, and, I argued some pretty good points there. Oh yeah, you know, just the points of you know, what what what, what does it matter if she's into a 15 year old boy? Yeah, those are good points. Yeah, it's the 70s. <laughs> It was disco. They were all fucked up back then. They're all fucking <laughs> fucking each other. Like whatever. <laughs> oh, let them be kids and pretend they're kids. I guess for her. They, anyway, they were at the disco text doing that all the time. <laughs> what are we gonna do, huh? Like yeah, yeah. Okay, Kim. Great. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, this is the last episode with Kim here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're done here. <laughs> okay, Kim. So, I thought uh, a, a good idea. To, to go with is to watch a movie that I think that you don't usually watch most of the time so I considered sci-fi because me and mm-hmm. Zero have been really into sci-fi in the past few weeks and we've been getting into movies and stuff like that and we decided like oh let's, let's look at a sci-fi film do something different spice the relationship up you know and then <laughs> yeah let's, let's, let's really anyway um, and then I when we were looking at the films I noticed a small, quirky animated film that I thought would be kind of interesting. And you're going to take the plunge with me on this. Um, It's a movie that's on the Criterion Collection. It's from the 70s. So it's oh, another fit. movie from the seventies. Well, this Ooh. is this movie is actually from two thousand twenty-one that we just watched, but it's set in the seventies. But mm-hmm. this movie is actually from the seventies. It's an animated oh. movie, and it's on the Criterion Collection, and it's actually uh, pretty well liked. Kim, what are we watching next week? God, now I already forget the freaking name of it. Oh, it's good a <laughs> Fantastic Planet. Yes, the nineteen seventy-three French Czech animated movie. That is currently on the Criterion Collection right now. Kim, why don't you describe what the movie looks like? Okay, you guys. So let's just, let me just throw this out. This is like way out of my comfort zone here with films that I usually watch. So I'm not nervous. I'm kind of like excited to dive headfirst into it. But first of all, Wiz told me that it's in, it, it's shot in French. And we're going to have subtitles, which... I never, ever, ever watch subtitles. Not because they bother me, just because 
uh, I'm just lazy and I don't want to read. <laughs> so I'm going to try it. Mm. And But the film itself looks really, really out there. Like, mm. complete, like, sci-fi. Like, just totally not something I would ever watch. And just the photo of the actual cover to the movie it just looks so weird. I would call the animation... Uh, if you guys are familiar with Monty Python, the animated sequences look a lot like that, but mm-hmm. really strange. So I am looking forward to this. I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while, but because of how weird it was, I kept saying to myself, eh, am I really in the mood for something like this? Right, right. Like, but, I'm like, okay. But I, I think we're going to give this a shot here. So Yeah, let's try it out. Something different. We are going to watch the 1973 film Fantastic Planet. Uh, directed by Rene Lalo. I'm, I'm probably screwing that name up, but uh, it's directed by Rene Lalo. And this is on HBO Max. I think it's also on the Criterion channel. So if you want to watch with us, you can check that out there. Go ahead. I have one more quick question for you about Licorice Pizza. Go ahead. Do we know why it's called Licorice Pizza? No. <laughs> okay, I didn't know either, but like my husband's like, why is it called Licorice Pizza? I'm like, I have no idea. It's a, it's really... Like the title's just weird. I thought it was weird. I, I, I think it just adds to the vibe of the film, really. Yeah, kind of like that, like '70s. Well, it's it's just it's just aimless, and the title just doesn't make any sense involved with the movie because the movie itself doesn't really have a. I, I think a co- like a co- well, not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really have a. Okay, coherent I I don't want to like dive in like deep into that. I was just like, is there a reason behind it that maybe I just don't there know? There probably is, and someone's probably going to ask Paul Thomas Anderson at some point. Like in the next ten years, and go. Hey, why was that titled Nick Licorice Pizza? And it probably would probably be along the lines of, I was high with my uh, my wife one night, and they were right? like, "Wouldn't like, it be great like, if it was called Licorice Pizza?" It's like, whatever, babe. I'm trying to get stoned, and that yeah. was where it happened. Yeah, it's just weird. I was like, "What? Oh, yeah. This is weird." Yeah. The, the um, I mean, I know, out. like in Los Angeles, I just googled it, and in Los Angeles, there's a record store chain. Oh, here we go. Okay, Licorice Pizza was a Los Angeles record store chain that inspired the title of Paul Thomas Anderson's 2021 film of the same name. Why? The term The term is a... Oh, God, I can't say that word. Something expression for, for oh. vinyl records, comparing them to the color of licorice and the shape of pizza. Compared to the color of licorice and the, pri- and the shape of... Okay, hold on. That inspired the title of Paul Thomas Anderson's film the same name. The term is a, collo- a colloquial expression Thank for you. I couldn't pronounce that vinyl word. records comparing them to the color of licorice and the shape of a pizza. Well, I probably bu- I probably butchered the name colloquial, so someone's going to probably say that. So it has to do with vinyl, really. So and again, like obviously it, the record store. So again, it has nothing to do with the actual film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess maybe just tying it back to that it was in the 70s. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Okay. So uh, tune in next week where uh, we discuss the film Fantastic Planet, directed by Renée Lalo. I am The Wiz. And I'm Kim Shackman. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.